What's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out the channel. I am super excited because today we're making a lot of progress. So close to finishing up the engine. Uh, but before we get into that, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like, share, all that other stuff. Follow us on Instagram uh, at Skunkworks Projects. And yeah, just look at that. We got our turbo side in. You guys saw we got the new catch can set up going. The new performance catch can. Uh, oil pan, engine transmission are all in. Only thing left is the intake side. But uh, before we do that, I got something on the table that I'm excited to show you guys. Okay, so what I'm excited to show you guys is not the pistons. These are actually for the LS. What I'm talking about is right here. So we got a few goodies from Powerhouse Racing. Uh, these are just new banjo bolts and washers to go for our VVTI oil feed. But this right here is their crank pressure and oil temperature sensor adapter. This is actually the newer model. I was hoping to get the old one, but hey, I'm not gonna complain about getting the latest stuff. So essentially what this is going to do is going to replace the oil level sensor on the 2J. And now that gives us a provision for uh, extra ventilation if you needed to. Uh, if you had some type of weird turbo setup and you wanted to drain to this side back into the oil pan, you could. Uh, but I don't really have a use for this big uh, opening. It's a Dash 12 ORB. So I ordered a plug for it already. Uh, that should be here in like two days. So I'm just going to plug that up. These two are both uh, 1 8 MPT uh, fittings. So we have one for the crank pressure sensor, which is just a regular pressure sensor. And then we have one for our oil temperature sensor. And we can't use just any regular oil temperature sensor. So you have to use the powerhouse racing one. And that's what this is. And you see... It's a lot longer than your typical oil temp sensor. And the reason for that is since this sits where the oil level sensor is, it's not uh, deep enough into the oil pan. So this extends all the way down into the oil pan and you pull a reading from there. Um, these are just the connectors to go with it. And then the compression fitting for it to go on. So, before we jump into that, um, I gotta go remove a few things on the engine and then we'll go ahead and throw this in. Well, at first look, it seems like it's gonna be easier to put the oil temp sensor into the housing while the housing's still outside of the engine bay. Things are a little tight in there with the motor mount and then the starter motor and I don't feel like going up underneath the car to do it right now. Uh, mostly because I'm just being lazy. So we're going to try to put this in with the oil temp sensor already installed. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And I'll, I'll adjust fire from there. So the oil temp sensor is a compression fitting. So how that's going to work is we'll start by adding the two sides. Now this one's got a few fittings uh, or a few pieces inside of it already. Like that right there, just these three pieces. We're gonna stack them in like such. Oh, that was right already. We drop our fitting in there, and then we're gonna go ahead and start threading that. There we go. Get it all lined up. slide that in there if you see it slides it's already got some friction on it or it's already met some resistance and then that will thread in like such uh, we'll throw a block in a little block off I don't have the uh, pressure sensor that I want to use just yet so uh, one cool thing is powerhouse racing they send this to you with an actual block off 
as well. And if you do already have the, or if you do have the sensor already that you're going to use, they also send this angled fitting so that you can get a pressure sensor in there. And since you're reading just pressure and not actual temp of a liquid, it doesn't have to protrude all the way. So. Ah. Maybe I should put should have put some thread sealer on that or something, but since there's not an actual fluid transfer going on, um, worst case it'd just be some oil splashing up from being slung off the rods. I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue of oil leaking up and out through here. Could be wrong, who knows? Next up is gonna be installing this. See if I can't. I'm using a 716. All right, so from there, now I just gotta get a 916 to go on the bigger one. And then, let's see if I can use one. Some man hands. Yeah. Now we see it doesn't slide anymore. So that's the way the compression fitting works. As that top one, remember this top uh, fitting had those little pieces inside of it. As you tighten down on it, those pieces get forced into a flared end on our bottom uh, fitting and it just compresses onto the temp sensor, which is why it's a compression fitting. I'm sure you guys didn't tune into this channel to hear me talk about how simple mechanical features work. So let's just throw it in the car. Well, my camera stand broke as soon as I tried to set up for this, so I didn't really get to record installing it. However, it's a pretty simple install. You just place it into the hole, tighten down the four bolts, and it kind of pulls itself in. It does have a, an O-ring on it to kind of help seal it just like the other the regular level sensor would. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out that's actually really cool is the connector for the sensor. It already matches the connector for the previous oil temp sensor that I had. Uh, so I don't have to make any modifications to the harness or anything. Um, I believe it's an AEM fitting. I'm sorry, I believe it's an AEM connector. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, what I am sure about is I don't have to make any modifications to my harness. But even if I did, they do ship this with the actual uh, male end of the connector too. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal if I had to. But I don't like doing wiring. So I'm pretty excited that I don't have to do it at all. So now the only thing left to do is once I get my plug is put my dash 12 ORB plug in here to close that hole up and then we're good to go. All right, so. Well, the last thing to do is to reconnect the hard pipe for the BBTI solenoid. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video or the fresh new banjo bolts and, and washers. I'm gonna reuse the same hard pipe, however, Powerhouse Racing does also offer a flexible uh, oil feed line for the BVTI. Um, I just opted to not go for it at this moment. But if by some odd chance you're watching this video, Powerhouse Racing, if you want to donate one to the build, I'll be more than glad to install it and show it off. So to start off, the way you can tell which bolt goes to which side, not just by the color, but if you look at the bottom of both of them, one has a larger opening than the other one does, and that larger opening goes on the bottom, which is gonna be the actual feed. Um, that's show over here. So yeah, larger one goes on the bottom, which is gonna be the feed uh, right in here. This one that kind of has the valve or whatever inside of it, that's gonna go on the solenoid itself because that's just gonna move and adjust with the pressure. Now 
mine is bent out of shape completely because uh, if you've seen one of my other videos, I uh, tried taking the head off with that still connected. I've got to find the torque specs for it. It says 41. Let's get my hand tight down there. And we'll see how this goes. you guys enjoyed the video that's all i have for this episode um, again don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel please like the video Com comment down below let me know what you think uh, do you use powerhouse racing for any of your parts if so uh, tag them below or something let us know what you use um, don't forget to check out some of our other videos um, we'll link a playlist at the end tons of 2j videos we got a bunch of cleveland videos and we're going to be starting uh adding more to our LS collection. So plenty of projects going on. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. And until next time.